Hi everybody, welcome back to Vampire. This is the end. The epilogue, we have completed the main story. Chapter 7 is now an epilogue. We have traveled into the Highlands to find Lady Ashbury's domain, which is this rather derelict castle. But we're going to hop inside, although it appears the gate is locked. So finally she learned how to lock her gates. It's locked. <laughs> The so, castle walls look decrepit. Have to Maybe I can find a way to sneak in. Find another way. I'm sure there's a, a gap we can leap into. Probably this right here. No? Hmm. Wow, after being in... London for so long. This is an interesting little environment. Can I hop up there? Nope. Just, we're going through this gap here, huh? Ooh. This is giving me Kaer Morin vibes from The Witcher. Some interactable. Oops, didn't mean to step on the gravesite there. Old tombstone. Mary Inglewood. Not our Mary. <laughs> she passed 1918. These are old. Robin Inglewood. That was 1578. Centuries ago. Environment. This is neat. So that's locked. I cannot enter. The lady of the manor isn't expecting visitors. Yeah. Uh, let's see if we can get up these stairs, and if there's a place to leap. Oh, there we go. Yoink! That was... Maybe it's just my imagination, but I think I smell Elizabeth's perfume. <laughs> she must be here somewhere. Well, I mean, there's a fire going. Old letter. London. It's 4th of August, 1865. Dear Lady Ashbury, thank you for your recent letter and all the good news it contained. I cannot wait to finally meet you when you arrive in London. The garden is beautiful under the summer sky, although I noted your wish to avoid heat and direct sunlight because of your frail health. You're welcome any day. We'll discuss this wonderful idea of yours concerning the foundation of an orphanage for young ladies inspired by the French Maison Royale de Saint-Louis. Sadly closed when the French people chose. My god, I can't even write these words down to cut their king's head off. Such a place destined to provide a good education to gifted but poor orphan girls will surely excite my friends here in the city. You can count on me and my influence to help make your project a huge success. Yours ever sincerely, Countess Alexandra Somerset. So Lady Ashbury has been a... Uh, a philanthropist for quite some time, it seems. I wonder if these are all her paintings? Or this might actually be her. Portrait of Elizabeth Blackwood by Johannes Vermeer. Yeah, she did say she had posed for some of the uh, the classic painters, so here's, here's Vermeer's rendition of her. Another letter we're gonna read? Ashbury Castle, 21st September, 1795. Dear Mr. McAllister, As the new legal owner of Ashbury Estate, I intend to quickly engage in the overdue maintenance and repairs of the walls and the crypt of the castle. Among the few architects I invited to send forth proposals, I was most impressed by your respectful approach concerning renovations on historical buildings and their preservation. 
I would be glad to meet you at your convenience. My only request would be to speak to you directly and not your assistants. Any evening of next month would be agreeable. You may come to the castle or I can meet you at your office as you prefer. If you agree to come to the castle, I would show you what kind of repairs and modifications I have in mind concerning the crypt, which may me need which may need considerable work and reconstruction. Very sincerely, Lady Ashbury. Well, we know Lady Ashbury is centuries old. Like most castles, this one has a crypt. And it holds something special inside. Whoa, this looks like us. Is this the portrait of, of us that she made? Yeah. Dr. Jonathan Reed by Elizabeth Ashbury, 1918. Elizabeth, my love, you allow my portrait to watch over you while you sleep. I'm flattered. This is her bedroom? It's... Seems like we need another... This castle is falling apart. ...repair job. Paris, 1888, as the Eiffel Tower was being constructed, it appears. Whoa. Are we dropping down there? Nope, oh, seems like it. That sweet fragrance. Elizabeth's perfume. She was here, and recently. I wonder if that's something I can sense with my vampire senses? Like whiffs of the air? Of course I'm thinking back to The Witcher where you could you could track scent. Doesn't seem like it. Alright, so who's this? This I saw this. Oh. I thought I saw that pitch picture glowing. Oh, it was this one. Oh, is this Elizabeth again? Van Gogh? <laughs> oh, that's awesome. All right, there's a letter on the table here. Let's check that out. Look at the size of this fireplace. Oh my god. Inverness, 18th uh, uh, April, 1907. Dear Lady Ashbury, I write to confirm that my men will be at your castle next Monday to begin the work, the new work on the crypt and its access. The plans have been approved and I'll personally, personally be on site to supervise the installation of the locks and security measures you have requested. I also can assure you that my men have been briefed about never entering the crypt itself or the second floor of the castle. I must say I'm proud to continue to en proud to continue and enhance the work started by my great-grandfather when employed by your ancestor in 1795. Very sincerely, Angus McAllister. Oh, if he only knew. Ancestor indeed. Let's get drafty in here with that giant open window there. Wow, look at all the coats of arms. Or heraldry at least. This is cool. This painting looks suspicious. Which painting looks suspicious? Which one, Jonathan? Which one has your gander up? What's he looking at? This one? Wow. That's a cool painting, though. A sword and a moon are the symbols I should look for. Wow, I didn't know this was going to be like a whole puzzle situation. Oh, there's something over yonder. Old contract. Inverness, 11th February, 1807. Dear Ms. Ashbury, 
When we last communicated, you asked for the conveyance of a large coffin from Temple Church, London, to the crypt of the Ashbury Castle in Scotland. Oh, that's got to be the uh, coffin of William Marshall. I'm happy to report your request has finally been validated. My drivers have informed have been informed that for security reasons, guards must always protect the coffin. You have hired these individuals who will be waiting for us in London. They also have been informed that under no circumstances should the carriage try to pass a river by boat, but always by road and bridges, for the precious wood and relics inside the coffin cannot be exposed to humidity and moisture. That's a nice little nod to uh, classic vampire mythology. You'll find a detailed quote for the entire operation attached to this letter. We are ready to go to London as soon as payment is received in full. Very respectfully, Samuel Lewis, independent contractor. Oh, this is where I came in originally. Okay, so we're looking for a sword and a moon. I mean, there's swords all over the place. But, these very helpfully glowing items here. One last switch. Oh, nope, that's a shield. That looks like a moon. Voila. Ooh, cool. Wow, it's dark down here. I think there's torches. Whoa. Ancient tome. 1217. An angel came to me, blessed to be ble blessed be to God. Michael appeared to me last night in all his glory, shaped in glorious blood to grant me eternal life at the dusk of my life. The apparition was so sublime and terrible that I could not help but lower my head and close my eyes. Struck by the divine gift, I fell to the ground, only to awake the next night. You will serve me as you served your kings, said the angel before striking me with all his power. You will protect this land through the eons to come. For all who knew me, I should now hide and retreat, for they consider me dead. Soon I will leave the company of men to serve my new purpose. Blessed be God. 1350. Michael appeared to me last night in my retreat under Temple Church and asked me to prepare for battle. The land must be saved. Death is everywhere. The Black Death. An epidemic sent by the devil himself to punish mortals all over the world. My arm is strong. In the name of God, I shall smite the enemies of mankind. England shall prevail. 1569. It is almost 20 years since my fight started against the devil, and the end is uncertain. From time to time, the plague, the Black Death, reappears in a village, in a town, and each time the vicious minions of hell approach to get their share of the mortal suffering. Vampires. Dreadful creatures. I won't let this land collapse. Until my last breath, I'll serve and protect England. 1578. Tonight in the small village of Hoddesdon, I met the most delicate soul I've seen for a long time. She was singing for the dead singing for those she knew and loved, those killed by a new plague outbreak, without fearing for her own life. Her voice moved me, so I chose to let her live. I offered her eternal life as a reward for her virtue and most pious attitude. Her name is Elizabeth Inglewood. I am not alone anymore. Together we shall praise God in all his glory for the eons to come. 
1618. My heart is breaking. My soul is bleeding. Tonight my dear Elizabeth left me. I have taught her all I knew, all she needed to know. Now she must walk her own path through the ages. This is her wish, and I will respect it. Elizabeth Inglewood, my sweet daughter, is gone, for she now wants to be known as Elizabeth Blackwood. I made her a promise. If she... Again, cop, stop doing that, game. I made her a promise. If she ever comes back to Hoddesdon, she will find me here, managing the Bull Inn her parents owned before dying. William Marshall shall disappear for a few times, too, now that the Black Death is no more. Until we meet again, I shall be known as William Thorne, waiting for my angel to come back. Oh my gosh. Marshall and Elizabeth Ashbury were an item? 1665, the devil is at work again. The great plague is back, reaping thousands of lives in London. I must sell the bull in and go there. One more. Once more, William Marshall pre shall protect the land. 1666. What have I done? I let the devil infect me. God forgive me. The terrifying creature I had to defeat was a, a demon straight from hell. An abomination of flesh. A walking apocalypse. I had to trap the dreadful creature in St. Paul's Church and set the building on fire. Without the advice of Michael, I don't know if I could have defeated my enemy. The flames cleansed the city of the demon's presence, but half of London burned down. Ever since, I've dreamt of a red flood of slaughter and rage. It's like the disaster has tainted my blood, my very soul. For the first time in centuries, I am afraid. I shall crawl back to my retreat and pray to God for mercy for my infected soul. 1667, Elizabeth came to me. She said, she said she felt my pain and rushed to save me. My poor daughter, blinded by rage, intoxicated by the blood of hate, I bit her. She fled, shocked by my betrayal. I laughed and cried as she cursed me. God, have I betrayed you? Have you abandoned me? Okay, wait, so Elizabeth is the daughter of... Is that literal daughter? Or daughter as in... Um, progeny, because that's how vampires talk. 1712. My prayers have been heard. I found the strength to resist the need for blood, the never-ending hunger. My poor Elizabeth, will you ever forgive me? I heard you... I heard you now kill and take pleasure in bloodbath with this new progeny of yours. You're a victim in all this. What have I done? I swear I will find a way to make amends for what I have done to you. I swear I shall rest, only rest, once I know how to appease the blood of hate. Ooh. Elizabeth. 1785. The Brotherhood of St. Paul's Stole finally agreed to meet me in London. They proposed to meet me inside the new cathedral of St. Paul. I like the wit and solemnity of these men. What a si Stop doing that. What a symbol to choose the place where I defeated this disaster, but also the place where I fell. I agreed to their proposition. Oh, wait, we've read this letter before. Oh, interesting. There, in the sacred silence of the church and under the eye of God, they respectfully listened to me. They acknowledged my victory against this evil creature, the Dos Astro, the eater of stars who only wished to spread death and pestilence all around her. Since they acknowledged my will to save London in 1666, they heard my request, burning my burning desire to stop the blood of hate. Their primate promised to come back to me with an answer. The primate of St. Paul wrote back to me with just a name, the Tear of Angels. According to him, this ancient artifact could heal anything, cleanse any blackened soul, and purify my blood. Blessed be the Lord, it took more than a hundred years to find a cure for the blood of hate, but I may have finally found it. I may finally have found it. Soon the rage shall end. Soon I may repair the wrong I did and cleanse my failures. Now all I need to do is retrieve the necessary ingredients to create the artifact. Blood of the purest heart mixed with the blood of a king. To find such rare ingredients is not what worries me most, for time is on my side. It is the last part that worries me. Pure essence of garlic. 
I'm afraid it will literally hurt like hell when I drink the antidote, but if that's the price to pay to cleanse my soul and correct my mistakes, I'm ready to endure this excruciating pain. 1786. I finally managed to gather all the ingredients needed to con concoct... Oh, wow, it took him... Took him some time. Up to a year. Blood of the purest heart for the fortitude. Blood of a king for courage. Garlic essence for the painful cleansing. After months of impatience, almost made mad by the hunger, I waited again and again until finally Elizabeth cautiously came to me. As promised, I had chained myself to be sure I would not attack her again. I did not recognize, recognize my sweet daughter at first, for she was only... For she only was Lady Blackwood now, the dreadful mistress of the dark, who took delight in slaughter and carnage in France. She smirked as I apologized and cried for what I had inflicted to her. She shouted at me when I tried to explain her to her that my bite had infected her, had given her the blood of hate, now burning in her veins, in her soul. I told her I had found a cure, and that I had managed to create one dose of the antidote. I gave it to her, to give, to, to give her back her previous peaceful life. In exchange, I only asked for her to take care of me, for I intended to be locked down at... Mm, for I intended to be locked down in my tomb, chained if necessary, to impeach me from, my, from feeding on any mortal or immortal. She reluctantly took the tears of angel, tear of angels and left. I hope to see her again soon, cured and at peace. 1794. Wow, this is a long journal. She came back to me finally. Cured, healthy, joyful. My Elizabeth. She told me she had drunk the antidote about a year ago in France after witnessing and taking part in the massacre of an entire orphanage caused by the blood of hate. Oh, no. <laughs> That's when the Lady Blackwood died, she said. She promised she would take care of me now. That's all I ask as I repent for all the murdered souls caused by my negligence of more than a hundred years. Final entry, 1795. My dearest daughter came back last week to tell me the good news. She's recently bought a castle in Scotland. She will soon finance the renovation of a castle crypt to provide me a new retreat. Far from temptation, far from the noisy, crowded cities. I can't wait to embrace the solitude find the peace I need to refrain from killing. God, please grant me the strength to resist the urges during the journey from London to my new domain. Before I leave, I should give a copy of these memoirs to the Brotherhood of St. Paul's Stole. Without the most shameful and sensible information, of course, soon I shall leave London to pursue my penance. There I shall find peace at last with the support of my resuscitated Elizabeth. What? It's quite a lot of story there. Drop your sword, father. You have nothing to be afraid of. Shall we abandon this then? Shall we lower our heads? No. No. You taught me that. Blood is approaching. Old but young. How strange. Shall I drink it? <laughs> Smite it? No, father. He is a friend. Please, rest. I'll take care of it. Caution, Elizabeth. Deceit runs through these veins. I know, Father. What took you so long, Jonathan? Is this... really... Him. Yes. This is William Marshall, first Earl of Pembroke, 
servant of five mortal kings, former regent and savior of England. The greatest knight who ever lived, according to some. And you called him father? For he gave me eternal life, and much more. I have so many questions, Elizabeth. You always had questions, Dr. Reed. Now that I stand before you both, in this vault, I know not where to begin. We still have a few minutes left. Where are we? What is this place? This is the Ashbury Estate. I inherited the title when I purchased the castle. Is this your retreat? Something of a secret place? It's more of a sanctuary, really. This is where I take care of my father. Ever since he became... unwell. Are you not afraid someone might discover you here? It's not that hard to find. Do not assume that I would hesitate to silence anyone who tried to reveal my secret. Fortunately, it has rarely come to that. Why did you flee here? When you told me I was the healthy carrier, I had nowhere else to go. You mean you had to return to the real source of this scourge? Yes, to end it once and for all. Will you go back to London? No, Jonathan. I do not intend to. And what of your daughter? Charlotte is a strong, independent woman who's about to come into money. <laughs> I took care She'll of everything. Now it's time for her to shape her future. I have destroyed the disaster, this creature that Harriet Jones had become. The epidemic is no more, and London will recover. In time. Yes. You did well, Jonathan. You truly saved the city. Yes, we did. Despite all obstacles. I'm truly convinced we did it together, Elizabeth. I cannot bear knowing I was the cause of all this. Through the use of my own blood. No. Not intentionally. This catastrophe was the result of unethical experimentation. And the will of a creature so inexplicably evil she exceeds all the terrible wonders I have seen since my death. But it was my blood all along. My corrupted blood of hate. The poisoned blood of my father. A healthy carrier. That's all I am. Why are you hiding William Marshall here? How could I not take care of him? He sacrificed himself by giving me the only dose of antidote he had. He gave you the antidote? Yes. Yeah, and in doing journal, you know so, that. he knew he'd have to be confined here. And yet he volunteered. That's how great a man William Marshall was. And still is. What do you do for him? I visit him as often as possible. I paint the landscapes he will never see again. I feed him with my blood. You feed him? You barely sustain yourself on the weak blood of the dying, yet you give him your blood? After he saved me from the blood rage, I swore I would never kill to feed. He said the same. Is he dangerous? What do you think? He is a thirsty Ekon, who has not fed in centuries. An elder vampire, driven by an urge to kill and spread the blood of hate. No redemption, then. And yet he thinks he has been offered immortality by the angels to protect the feeble and to smite the unholy. Can he communicate? Yes. Sometimes he even seems like the noble knight who saved and raised me. But, you know, the malice never fully leaves his eyes. We could cure him. It's too late. The blood of hate has run for too long. The antidote would not work on him. I tried. Believe me, I tried. William Marshall infected you. 
he is the true original carrier. Yes. But he saved me by sacrificing himself. Saved you? How? The tears of angels. The cleansing of impure blood by an older, more powerful blood. It worked on me, did it not? Yes. Blood is the definitive key to our species. Scowls, cleansing, lineage. Do you really think it worked? It has, Jonathan. I was nothing but a beast who took pleasure in slaughter. I roamed across Europe, reaping my bloody crop. It was the blood of hate. But my father's antidote cured me. Who are you, really? How could I answer that? I went through many lives and identities to reach this day. To you, I am Elizabeth Ashbury, and that's all I wish to be. I understand, and I respect your desire for privacy. Thank you, Jonathan. How did you meet William Marshall? He was an Econ for centuries when he found me. He saved me from certain death by making me his progeny. Why did he choose you? You should ask him that. Did you ever blame him? Not even when he was infected and bit me. He is my father. He raised me. He taught me how to behave. What about us? What do you mean? You know my feelings towards you, Elizabeth. But you left without a word. So I'm worried about your feelings towards me. I love you, Jonathan. I've loved you since the moment I saw you rescue poor Mr. Hampton in that filthy slaughterhouse, forgetting the danger as you turned your back, like the newborn fool you were. That, uh, didn't turn out so great after all. You should have told me. No, Jonathan. The William Marshall myth lies at the heart of so many hostile plans. I could not risk jeopardizing his safety. So why did you come here? You knew I would follow you. I can't let you go. Because I know now the blood of hate is still in my veins. No one but I can put an end to this tragedy. I can help you. You can trust me, Elizabeth. I know, Jonathan. You have been the most loyal ally these last few weeks. But this is my duty. Would your protege agree to speak with me? I have so many questions for him. Go on, Jonathan. But be careful. Yes? Sir William. My god. You really are. William Marshall. You served Richard the Lionheart and his brother, King John. It is such a privilege to meet you. I did in my day. Come closer if you want to speak, for my hearing isn't what it used to be. I think your hearing is fine. <laughs> what is it you want then? I found your research on the antidote. The tears of the angels. What ingredients did you use? Once I understood what the ingredients were, I used the tears of King Richard and the pure blood of the valiant Bodicea. King Richard and Bodicea? How did you find such relics? It took me many years to locate their hiding place. Then I had to learn the formula. If I recall, it belonged to an ancient brotherhood. The Order of St. Paul, I believe. And did it work? Yes. The tears cleansed my poor Elizabeth's blackened heart. It was such a blessing to see her smile again. I found and defeated the disaster 
that was threatening to smite London. You should know that the city is safe for now, Sir William. Then may I call you brother? Did you resist its poison? Even a scratch from a beast so evil could endanger you and all those you care for. You also defeated one in 1666. Who was it? She was a malicious witch who spread plague throughout the city with her army of rats. She had been hiding in a bakery in Pudding Lane for months when I finally found her. How did you defeat it? We fought for hours. In the end, I had to lock her in St. Paul's Cathedral and burn the building down. I wanted to be sure she was destroyed. The blood of hate. How does it affect you? Do you feel it now? The blood of hate? Yes. Nothing more than a sneeze, really. A sneeze held for so long, you could blow a fortress down if you released it. I would like to ask you about vampires. Vampires? What about them? Considering your experience, please tell me what you know. They are terrible creatures. I have seen and fought many in my time. Foul temptresses with sharp claws and shrieking beaks. I have never seen such a creature. What are you talking about? Of course you've never seen a creature like them. Vampires are deadly, swift, and implacable. Sounds like this is a completely different creature than Ekon's. Where did you encounter such creatures? The last time I saw one was in a Celtic temple near Salisbury. A terrible and god-forsaken place full of ghosts and pestilence. Can we speak about the Morrigan? The Red Queen? What of her? You met her, did you not? Just once. But she never ceased to sing to me. I love her song. It is a song of blood and war. I only wish she would sometimes let me rest. Do you know who she is? I don't want to discuss this in front of my sweet Elizabeth. Why? For a time, she too could hear the red song. The steps she danced to its melody brought pain upon the world. Do you remember Murden, your maker? Only God is my maker, for he created everything on this earth. He blessed me with eternal life through his archangel, Michael. But Murden, Michael, is a vampire. He made you a blood-sucking creature of the night. Blood, yes. I used to drink it from the throats of the unworthy. Then I was punished for my deceit. During my penance, I rely entirely upon my sweet Elizabeth. Tell me about Elizabeth. How was she infected? I do not wish to discuss it. Please, Sir William. I need to know what the blood of hate is. How is it transmitted? After defeating the disaster in St. Paul's Cathedral, I returned to my retreat infected. This is where my sweet Elizabeth found me, for she heard my pain from across the sea. Where is this retreat you mentioned? In London, under Temple Church, beneath my empty tomb. I always love to sleep there while listening to the bell above. What happened then? The blood of hate had twisted me into a rage-filled man. I attacked my progeny and infected her too. Forgive me, Elizabeth. I failed you. You bit her again. 
Is that how she was infected with the disaster's blood? I think I understand now. Elizabeth fled, and I fell to my knees, begging for forgiveness. I swore I would find a way to make things right. How did you meet Elizabeth? Times were tough. I had awakened to protect the land from a new plague. I heard her sing for her dead family. Singing for her death to come. I chose to save her. When was that? It was so long ago. A few years after Elizabeth of England and Catherine of France established their alliance against Spain. What did you do? I raised her as my progeny. After she left to see the world, I rebuilt her deceased parents' inn, owned it as William Thorne for a time. Those were good years. Did you really sacrifice yourself to save her? That was the only righteous path. The blood of hate made me betray her. I am at peace here. I can think about what I've done and how I failed. Do you not want to be cured? No. This hunger is mine. I would feel empty without it. It has been part of me for so long. All I want is quiet. Silence. You agreed to be confined here, then? Yes. Once I was sure she was cured, I asked to be locked down here. I deserve it. The world needs it. We could set you free. Let you out. Isn't that what you want? I pray for the day I'll see the sky again. I have all but forgotten its colors. I could walk and do so many things beneath the stars. But I doubt it would be wise to release me. Then will you stay here and repent? Elizabeth told me it will not be long now. I cannot wait to feel the sweet caress of her hand on my cheek after so long as she releases me. Has the time come? Yes, Father. Why not unleash me then? To see the sky a final time? You already are the sky. And all its stars. I'm not defeated. For I welcome the sword you bear. For it is mine. You were never defeated, my lord. Farewell, Father. It's <laughs> a pretty accurate strike. And to you also, Jonathan. What? What do you mean? Oh, I thought she was about to chop my head off. I can't stand what I've become. This healthy carrier, as you put it. The flames no. will purify the poison that runs in my veins. No. I won't allow this to happen. I am death. Jonathan, wherever I go, I can't stand it. I am Dr. Jonathan Reed, champion of Murden, chosen to save England from the vampire epidemic. I could cure you. What do you mean? We are creatures of blood, Elizabeth. Everything about us is in our blood. With time, I could perfect the antidote William Marshall gave you. Trust me, for time is on our side. That is a risk I cannot take, Jonathan. I won't bring another such disaster into this world. Elizabeth, no. Trust me. I can save you. How could I trust you, Jonathan? How could I take such a chance? I'll stay here with you then. 
as long as we must until I find a cure. You have no idea what you're talking about, Jonathan. Despite his madness, William was strong enough to starve the centuries. I doubt we can do the same. We will lock ourselves down then. I'll get all the material I need and I'll perform my research here with you until you're cured. Are you mad? Who would take care of us? Who would free us if it takes decades or even more? Old Bridget will take care of us. You are serious, aren't you? You really are ready to do this. I love you, Elizabeth. I can do this. Please, stay with me. I... I believe you. This is crazy, but... I believe you, Jonathan. if it's always destined to end that way or if if there's someone one prayer for the summoned called by this song child born from darkness whose path he must find now the song is sung and your path chosen England is safe for you have prevailed I bid you farewell my champion bittersweet you found yourself a newer quest and so I leave you to it my queen sleeps once again, and I'll soon join her slumber, until alas she rises, woken by the hunger never fed. Did you hear the typing there on the keyboard at the end? Obviously it took them into the modern era, it's a, they're still working on the, the cure perhaps. So I wonder if it's always destined to end that way, that Elizabeth decides not to jump into the fire, or if or if there's a bad ending where she does. This game was a complete surprise. Uh, I had not heard about it, and it was... One of the one of the Epic Games uh, weekly freebies once a uh, year or two ago, I think, and uh, I decided to claim it because it's it looked interesting, and I'm really really glad that I played it. It was such a neat concept, and I think really well executed. Props to the environment artists. I thought thought the environments were really, really neat. I thought the combat was fun. The the different all the different weapons having different upgrade possibilities, so it kinda of depended on if you wanted to be uh, if you wanted to try to rely on your parry skill to block, or if you wanted to kinda of do what I ended up doing, which was just be super dodgy. <laughs> I mean, uh, um, dodge around and try to avoid hits, which didn't always work out to my favor very often, or often enough. But I liked the variety that, that you could you could define your own your own play style in that way, uh, using different items. So that was that was well done. They didn't just limit you to. Uh, a handful of, of weapon options. You had a lot to choose from. And then the vampire abilities were really cool. I still never really figured out the best way to use uh, the ultimate ability. I think I only ever used it two or three times in the entire game. And I think that was that was a failure on my part to not not figure that out. Figure out the best use uh, music composer Olivier Derivier, Derivier, uh, props, excellent score to this game. It was atmospheric and spooky and 
discordant when it needed to be. The... Um... I forgot what I was going to say. Oh, the, the, the bridge song. I don't... I don't like the only time you ever hear it is when you're crossing the bridge from Southwark to the docks. That kind of twangy uh, score was just a neat sound. I thought that was really well done. I guess the one the one criticism that I would have of the game is the the, the proofreading, I think there were, there were way too many errors in terms of uh, grammar and wording and things in the, the flavor texts. And some of the dialogue trees uh, didn't fully path correctly. Like you would, you would know a piece of information, but then a later dialogue option would be you questioning that information and learning that inform information again. So, um, like when when I read the the Will William Marshall's journal there at the end that was sitting on that pedestal in the in the crypt, pretty much a, a lot of that stuff is revealed in the dialogue between or with Elizabeth and then with William Marshall. So I didn't, I could have not read that stuff read the um, journal and would have gotten enough of the story that I would have felt satisfied. So that type of thing. And it happens several times throughout the game. I'm not just picking on that one item. It's the most recent example of that, so uh, that's why I'm mentioning it. But the... Um, I think that's probably the one. If I had one criticism that uh, I think could have been done better it would be the, 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 the scripting in that way. Voice performances, since we're here with the voice recording and engineering and whatnot, so well done. The, the cast, every single one of them was outstanding. And now I'm seeing some of them were played multiple characters. Like Clarence, Ichabod, Lord Finney, and Edgar Swansea were all played by one guy, Harry Haddon Patton. Nice job. All of this. This is incredible. I had no idea. Because so many of the names or, or the voices sounded different. It wasn't like a, a Bethesda game where you'll, you'll be in Fallout and you'll talk to somebody and you'll hear the exact same voice throughout the game. It was every single person sounded different. I didn't come across a single character that I thought, oh, that's the same voice actor who does this other character. So, really well done in that respect. Particularly, I mean, Jonathan was great. Mary, I thought her voice performance was fantastic. Um, Elizabeth, of course, she was great. I had a fun time with Ichabod Throdmorton. He had that was a that was a really fun accent or or vocal style to apply to that kind of full of himself. Uh, I don't know. I don't know how to how to enunciate it, but um, I liked his. I liked the character voice that 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 actor chose for for that character. Well, we've got quite a lot of quite a lot of credits here. So, Amio Amio Prod Inc. is this the composer's personal company, and and or is that just a a music recording company that I'll have to look that up. The developer here is Don't Nod in France. I enjoyed one of their previous games 
Remember Me. Uh, I played that on the PS3. That was a that was another really interesting concept, and I thought that one was really well executed. So uh, if if you haven't played that, and I believe that's available on PC as well, and in, in, in addition to consoles. So if that's one that you have not tried, give that one give that one a try. That one takes place in a future futuristic Paris, um, and there's this concept of doing these investigations and seeing um, like video or memory footage of something and being able to roll back and mark certain points in time to learn information. Um, I'm describing it terribly, uh, but it was a really interesting concept and uh, cool, cool setting and design again. And I seem to recall the score being very cool with that too. I wonder if it was the same same composer or not. Well, and that's that. That's the credits for Vampire. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. If you were here from episode one through episode 45 or whatever this one ended up being, thank you so much for watching. And if you're one of the new, if you popped in at the end here, boy, you sure missed a lot of story, but I hope you enjoyed what you saw. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already. I'm going to have another series coming up here very shortly. And uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Hope you're staying healthy and safe. Thank you again so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye, <laughs>